this individual realizes the absolute ridiculousness of the fool's errand that he's on. This whirlwind tour of South America that he just got done completing has had absolutely no effect whatsoever on anyone believing who is in charge of Venezuela. He has received some absolutely devastating, devastating news today. And I think this is probably going to spell the end of, at least as far as he's concerned, regime change efforts in Venezuela. The UN High Commissioner on Human Rights from Chile, Michelle Bachelet, has cordially accepted an invitation from Nicolas Maduro, the president of Venezuela, to tour Caracas and see the effects of the crippling sanctions coming out of Washington, D.C. This is what's going to happen in Venezuela this weekend. She will be received by the actual government of the country. Nowhere in her statement does she even acknowledge random guy named Juan because anyone who is still so deluded as to believe that this guy is going to ever rule just needs pity at this point because it's overwhelming the evidence of what's happening. This isn't some organic internal uprising on behalf of the people of Venezuela. It is a coordinated strike on a government that has basically decided to stand up to D.C. And they're leading the way in how you do that. You don't even accept their narrative. You just continue and you soldier on. In today's video, I'm going to specifically debunk two lies I see repeated over and over again down in the comment section. Number one, big lie. It wasn't the sanctions that caused the problem in Venezuela. It was just evil, terrible, horrible socialism. And they had been collapsing from uh, when Chavez took over all the way until 2014. And that was just the breaking point. That's the big lie. If Nicolas Maduro were this evil, terrible, horrible dictator, how did the National Assembly come to power in 2015? If Nicolas Maduro were this evil, terrible, horrible dictator, how was it that he only won an election by 1.5% in 2013? Do dictators do that? No. If they have control of the entire process, they show themselves winning by comfortable margins, if not very large, almost unbelievable margins. This started in 2014-2015. There were two specific events that caused the collapse in Venezuela. Specific event number one, the U.S. catastrophically collapsed the price of oil through a couple of different mechanisms. Number one, they cajoled the Saudis and a couple of other allies to increase production at that meeting in Vienna in 2014, when every single economic indicator showed that economies around the world were slowing and that they needed to ease up on production to maintain the price of oil. 2015, the U.S. lifted its ban on exporting oil for profit, dumping even more oil onto the market, collapsing the income of Venezuela. Then, Order 13692, this is the original emergency declaration back in 2015. And I'm going to read this for you. I don't normally do this because it's boring. But I want to put this idea that the sanctions weren't responsible to bed. The, the big lie is the sanctions were only on certain people and they didn't really affect the economy. Let me read this for you. This is where they seized all of the profits of Sitco. I, Barry Sotero, completely illegal legal and illegitimate president of the United States of America, find that the situation in Venezuela, including the government of Venezuela's erosion of human rights, guarantees, persecution of political opponents, blah, 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 blah. Section 1. All property and interests in property that are in the United States that hereafter come within the United States or that are or hereafter come within the possession or control of any United States person of the following persons are blocked 
that may not be transferred, paid, exported, withdrawn, or otherwise dealt in. Okay, and then they go on and list. Basically what this did is it seized billions and billions of dollars that were in U.S. banks. And all of the profits from Citgo were suspended from being repatriated back to Venezuela to go into their banks. Now this was Executive Order 13692 of 8 March 2015. This is Executive Order 13808. This was 2017. This was the current administration. President of the United States of America, in order to take additional steps with respect to the national emergency, declared in 13692. Now, this shows the absolute no light in between the last administration and the current administration regarding this event. Section 1. All transactions related to provision of financing for or other dealings in the following by United States person or entity or within the United States are prohibited. New debt with a maturity of greater than 90 days of PDVSA. This is where they blocked PDVSA from getting any kind of loan, even though there were banks in this country that were ready to give loans because they knew that Venezuela was good for the money because they have the oil. It stopped all that. It stopped everything. It completely froze up all of the finances of this country. They could not purchase anything. And this is not a secret. This is what's going on now. This is from today. They've realized it's not good enough just to interject themselves in the markets of the United States. Now they have to interject themselves in the markets of the world and say, if anybody out there in the world even thinks about dealing with this government that we don't agree with, we're going to attack you. Was it Kissinger that said back in 73 they wanted to make the economy of Chile scream in the whole issue with Pinochet and, and Allende? That's what sanctions do. They destroy economies. With, of course, this Pollyanna notion, this idea that the um, people will only suffer moderately. It'll be the, the real people in power that'll suffer the most and they'll be overthrown, blah, 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 blah. And, of course, there were exceptions given, depending on whether you were part of the Candyman crowd or not. Goldman Sachs, Steve Mnuchin, they were given a pass. If you want to look this up for yourself, look up Goldman Sachs Hunger Bonds or Steve Mnuchin. That's M-N-U-C-H-I-N. That's how you spell his last name. And they were allowed to issue these ridiculously expensive bonds and get paid. They didn't realize that they, meaning Washington, D.C., that when they issued these sanctions, that it was actually going to punish American businesses and American companies. Random guy named Juan doesn't realize that this lie being told by Washington, D.C. is so epic and so rooted in ignorance of the socio-political state on the ground in Venezuela. The only group in Venezuela, and this is real, real important, that I think a lot of people um, misunderstand. The only group in Venezuela that is totally united is the Chavistas. Period. There are a lot of people that are anti-Chavista, yes. And you might even be able to make the um, allegation that if you took all of those people that were not Chavista and you put them all together, they might outnumber the Chavistas or it's going to be real close. But the problem with those anti-Chavista folks is the same problem we've seen with random guy named Juan. They're disparate. They've made this allegation, well, we don't want Chavistas to rule anymore, but they can't figure out with an, anything better. They can't figure out any new direction. That's why they can't win an election. Because there's three or four or five different ideas. And a random guy named Juan got read the riot act yesterday. Period. The sanctions, the collapse of the price of oil, and the thirdly, the paramilitaries coming out of Colombia causing the specific shortages 
in the western part of Venezuela, where all of the photos are from, by the way, created this collapse. Was Venezuela a perfect country prior to 2013? No. Absolutely not. There were Every country down there has certain areas that are poorer, that have certain problems. The vast majority of the problems in Venezuela that were caused by Colombia. The running drug war the last 20, 30, 40 years that sent massive amounts of refugees into Venezuela that overtaxed their system. Nobody ever talks about that. Now, number two, big lie. Venezuela, uh, Venezuela, Maduro, evil, terrible, horrible dictator, bans his opposition from running. That's why he wins. If he allowed everybody to run, he would lose. Totally false. Once again, because they would run different parties and they would split up all the opposition vote. But you cannot, you cannot be found attempting to illegally overthrow the government or a plotting attempts on the life of the current president. Enforcing laws that prohibit running for president while simultaneously you are plotting to kill the current one doesn't make you a dictator. Let me say this again. Nicolas Maduro enforcing the laws that prohibit someone running for president while they are simultaneously plotting to kill the current one does not make you a dictator. Sorry about that. And that's true in the United States. It's called making terroristic threats. And if you are found doing so in our country, this bastion of freedom and um, democracy, you won't be allowed to run for president at all. I've made the allegation before that we have a problem in this country. And the problem is this, and this is why I'm not popular with either the left or the right. There is no one individual that we can install in Washington, D.C. that's going to fix everything. I don't care how wonderful their ideas are. I don't care how much they say on the campaign trail. The concept, the very concept of saying this one person, if we elect them, will fix A, B, C, X, Y, Z, that is wrong-headed thinking. Nothing with an R by its name, nothing with a D by its name, is going to fix our problems. This country has gotten very large, very diverse since our founding. The vast majority of our states could operate as countries on their own. The vast majority of our states are actually more wealthy and more prolific than most of the countries in the world. It would be the best solution going forward and turning D.C. into just this little tiny administrative body that has no effect would be the best solution to make that the idea of being the president of the United States of Washington, D.C. or whatever be just this uh, honorary type of position that has no real power, the real power being vested in the states in the governor's houses, and then the governor's taking that same idea and saying, okay, yes, I'm the governor, but the real power is vested in mayors and in city councils. That power comes from the people up. I know it starts to sound like evil, terrible, horrible social democracy, but that's what works. Because if you do end up getting someone in government that, you know, is a liar or a piece of crap, you can take them out without infecting the entire state or the entire country. Let's say you get a bad let's say you get a bad governor. Okay, let's say and I'm just picking a random state here. The let's say Missouri. Okay, it gets a bad governor. They can deal with their issue and it won't affect the other forty nine. They don't have to wait four years or six years or end up being under tyranny like this. Now, one last thing I would like to share with you guys, and it's actually a third fallacy, a third big lie out of D.C., has to do with how a random guy named Juan 
came to the idea that he was in power. It has to do with Article, let's see here, Article 220, National Executive Power, Article 225. And let me see real quick if I can find this. Article 233, sorry about that. The President of the Republic shall become permanently unavailable to serve by reason of any of the following events. Death. Did Nicolas Maduro die? No. Resignation. Did Nicolas Maduro resign? No. Removal from office by decision of the Supreme Tribunal of Justice. Did that happen? No. Permanent physical or mental disability certified by a medical board designated by the Supreme Tribunal of Justice. No. Abandonment of his position. No. Duly declared by the National Assembly and recalled by popular vote. All false. All completely false. And even if this were the case, random guy named one had 30 days, 30 days to conduct an election to replace him, and that hasn't happened. Now, I'm going to go back to one of these executive orders here and show you something that reveals how illegal what the United States is doing regarding Venezuela. All right. This is from 8-9-2017. Treasury sanctions eight individuals involved in Venezuela's quote-unquote illegitimate constituent assembly. This is the mechanism by which Nicolas Maduro took control of the government away from the National Assembly that had pretty much brought the entire government and country to a standstill. Let me read this for you from Washington. Today, the U.S. Department of the Treasury's Office of Foreign Assets Control designated eight individuals involved in organizing or otherwise supporting the creation of Venezuela's Constituent Assembly, known as AC, and participating in, quote-unquote, anti-democratic actions pursuant to Executive Order 13692, which we've covered. The AC, which seeks to rewrite the Venezuelan Constitution and dissolve Venezuelan state institutions was created through an undemocratic process instigated by Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro's government to subvert the will of the Venezuelan people. Okay, real quick, let's go take a look at the Constituent Assembly section of the Constitution. It's all the way at the bottom. Chapter 3, National Constituent Assembly. I'm going to read this for you. In fact, I'll zoom in. And maybe you can read it with me. The original constituent power rests with the people of Venezuela. This power may be exercised by calling a National Constituent Assembly for the purpose of transforming the state, creating a new juridical order, and drawing up a new constitution. Okay, first of all, the idea of a National Constituent Assembly is in their constitution and legal. This constitution was approved by 73% of the people of Venezuela. The initiative for calling a National Constituent Assembly, Article 348, may emanate from the President of the Republic sitting with the Cabinet Ministers. That's option one. Option two, from the National Assembly by a two-thirds vote of its members. That's option two. Option three, from the municipal councils in open session by a two-thirds vote of their members. That's option three. Option four, and from 15% of the voters registered with the civil and electoral registry. Okay. Nothing illegal about this. The whole point of the Constituent Assembly is to fix the government. Article 349. The President of the Republic shall not have the power to object to the new con Constitution, meaning that once the Constituent Assembly is put into place, the people have control of it, and the President doesn't. I'll say this again. The President of the Republic shall not have the power to object to the new Constitution. The existing constituted authorities, the existing 
constituted authorities shall not be permitted to obstruct the constituent assembly in any way. That means random guy named Juan. For purposes of the promulgation of the new constitution, the same shall be published in the official Gazette of the Republic of Venezuela and the Gazette of the Constitution. This is the whole point. This is their reset button. This is their partitioned hard drive, if you know you want to use that terminology. Perfectly legal to stand up a constituent assembly of the people. And once it's stood up, it's actually more powerful than the president, regardless of who the president of the country is at the time. And this is why our country, pardon me, Washington, D.C., is sanctioning Venezuela. Because they have a reset button in their constitution. Imagine if we had one. Imagine if we had that ability. So I know we're 20 minutes in. I'll give you the links to the Constitution here, and you can read it for yourself and go back through and find the sections. And I'll show you know the links that completely prove, beyond the shadow of a doubt, the people who support the Bolivarian Revolution in Venezuela, the Chavistas, whether you agree with them, whether I agree with them, whether you think it works or you don't think it works, or Sean Hannity thinks it works, or Rush Limbaugh thinks it works, or anybody else. It's not ours to decide. There have been problems largely created by the United States. Pardon me, again, Washington, D.C., in Venezuela. And they're attempting to ramp it up. Because they're losing, and they're losing badly. Because I've said it before, and I will say it again. This issue in Venezuela, the reason I cover it so much, it is the greatest geopolitical miscalculation in our history. This is not Iraq. This is not Syria. This is not Yemen. Believe it or not, these people are, quote-unquote, Americans. They're just South Americans. And they love their freedom. And they have been front row seat to the actions of Washington, D.C. for longer than I've been alive. And that's coming up on half a century now. They understand this clearly. This does not end well for us. However you look at it, the world is falling in behind Venezuela. And there are things I'd like to say I probably shouldn't at this point. But I'll reiterate it again. Enforcing laws against criminals attempting to overthrow the government and or kill the president doesn't make you a dictator. Like, share, subscribe.